to the anxiety of parents about sending their very young children to online schooling, their number one worry is, can my child do it? Kaya kaya ng child ko mag-focus online at makinig lang since this is a platform that is two-dimensional. Not like face-to-face -face na pwede namin silang hawakan or pwede namin talaga silang mag-interact beside them and we can give them more concrete activities. But here, they're faced with a screen and nag-worry si parent, kaya kaya ng anak ko makinig online na isang buong oras. Anxiety rin ng parent if they themselves can handle their school, their child schooling at home. Um, equipped kaya ako, kaya ko kaya turuan yung anak ko um, to, or to assist them online. Um, coupled with that would be anxieties on their time management. Kaya ko kaya, may oras kaya ako mag-assist sa child ko. Pwede kong iwan na lang kaya siya dun sa online schooling niya. Um, another thing that they are anxious about is the child's social interaction um, regressing with this online platform. Paano kaya pagdating sa face-to-face, -face, yung kid ko kaya, marunong kaya siya magkaroon ng friends or to play with other children? Um, but of course, coupled with that again, is their anxiety about sending their children to, all, to the physical school. We did a lot of brainstorming since we're actually an experienced team. We've been here for 18 years already, so this is our second year online. On the first year of our online schooling, we had to transition and really brainstorm as to what is important in our pedagogy. Like, what do we believe in? What does the school believe in? and what is our goal and our targets in this school, which is for us, the pinaka important is holistic development. Not just the cognitive development of the child, we also want to address everything else, the self-help skills, emotional development, physical development. So we had to think of how we're gonna do that in an online uh, program. And we were able to do so naman, considering all the factors. We also had to ask parents for evaluations. We had to do a needs assessment. What does the family need at this point? It's not just what the child needs it, but how will the parents or the family support the child? Because we will, our tagline, our school tagline is helping your children achieve milestones. We are your partners in helping your children achieve milestones. So how will we work hand in hand to achieve all these goals? Plus, we had to now consult specialists, IT specialists on how to go about the plans that we were making. What is the best app? What do we use for Zoom classes? What are the features that we need? How will we protect our clients? The data privacy issues. And aside from IT specialists, we also had to consult with developmental pediatricians. How will this online thing affect the child when in the physical school, we were always saying na bawal ang screen time, ilimit ang screen time, but then now, kami na yung screen time. School is already screen time. So we had to consult developmental specialists on the hours that we allot for schooling, depending on the age. We also had to consult ophthalmologists for children because, syempre, everything is done 2D on screen. Kailangan namin silang i-consult at paano ba namin sila i- ano ba yung pwede namin gawin para hindi masira yung eyes nila. Stuff like that. Everything was carefully planned because you can't make a mistake, especially with young children. Everything has to be considered. See, it does have its advantages. There's a lot of room for growth and improvement and observation. Because, you know, you can't really say that something is effective until you really study it for the long term. Pero right now, what is observable now is it really has a lot of cognitive development advancement. Like, siguro kasi children are more focused now on uh, what they need to learn on screen.
struggled with that in the beginning because we wanted sana the parents to prepare the materials at home. So we initially thought of um, having materials that are easy to find at home and we would play games using those materials. But parents are also working so we didn't want to bother them anymore with preparing the materials. The children's materials kasi are very artsy or very crafty at this age and it's gonna be hard for the parents to do that so eventually we ended up giving them all the materials that they need so all they have to do is look at their kit there is a list and they have to see what's gonna be used for which day so everything that they need let's say to play a game let's say you need paper crayon cutouts or clip arts of crayons with different colors. Everything is supplied to them already so that the classes will be smoother and so that parents won't have a hard time as well. So sa regular class, yung isang set ng flashcards, let's say, na gagamitin mo, ay kailangan mo nang i-produce kung ilan yung estudyante mo kasi padadalan mo silang lahat ng ganyan sa bahay in order for you to be able to play a game. Otherwise, you'll end up just using the screen all the time, eh, which we don't like. We don't like a lot of screen sharing. We like interaction. Okay, well, it looks like we're still gonna be online for a long time. Even if the government gives us a go signal, parents wouldn't want their kids to go to physical school yet. Though we are ready with a face-to-face -face plan, it's gonna be gradual, we're gonna start with blended. The school is ready for face-to-face, -face. but if the parents are not ready, we're also ready to be online for, the, for a long time. Now the prediction is we might stay here for two to three more years, which is why we're trying our best to improve um, the program. There is always something to improve on. If parents want to try this online schooling, I think it's really, really doable and it's really very beneficial for the young child naman. It's not, some parents might think, baka hindi nago work. It does. We've proven that it does work. But you also have to choose the school and the program very well, depending on what you need. Now for the young child, uh, what you look at is a small class size because children always want to be heard. That's a need for them. Imagine putting your child in a class with a big setting and the teacher will not be able to call everybody because may online trafficking yan eh. Parang hindi tayo pwedeng sabay-sabay nagsasalita. So talagang teacher has to consciously call the children one by one and they have to be called individually. Imagine if you're a lot of kids, hindi magagawa ng teacher yan. Number two, what you should look at when you look for an online school, I always say it's the teacher, offline or online. It's the teacher who really carries the class. Siya yung best asset ng school eh. So, if you can schedule a free trial with a school just so that you can see how the teacher interacts with the children, how the teacher carries the class. Then you will be able to get a better gauge of what the school is all about. Imagine that teacher will hold the classes for your child for 10 whole months. So it is really best if you can already preview what the teachers are like in that school. And also, another thing to consider is your goal. What is your goal for the child? Do you want the child to be homeschooled eventually? Because you can already start with homeschooling right now. But if your goal is for the child to go to a traditional school, you can already put the child in a school that will train the child for writing and reading and being with other children so that you can also equip him with the skills that he needs. Also a school that communicates well because one thing that is uh, suffering in this online thing is communication. If the school is open to communicate and kasi hindi naman namin nakikita what goes on in the house so if we are if the school is eager to find out your situation like para maintindihan yung child as a whole uh, then you got yourself a good school that will be a good choice.